Okay, so welcome back guys. This is this lesson is basically in continuation to our previous one and The last thing was the swirl. Okay, now it's time to Actually create the emitter. Of course, it's really going to be important for us Otherwise the fluids will not going to come outside So here in this case the the sack or this particular bag is going to be the source of our emission of the fluids so what you're going to do next is that just select the sack and select the container and fluid effects just going to give added contents emit from the object so let me just go for the reset settings because that's very very important just apply and close okay and let's just do one thing let me just a uh, little bit rotate the camera or pan the camera and just see okay we just forgot to disable it out okay fine let's play that once again obviously it's gonna take some of the time because now the fluids are actually taking uh, part inside the the Maya so here you can see that um, quite frankly I, I just cannot find any interest inside this because um, first of all the behavior of the fluid is not like very appreciable but the good thing is that almost all the section of the sack is contributing to puff out the the dust or the seven particles outside but there are really going to be very important settings that indeed going to help us a lot in improving the motion of the fluids okay so let's just go step by step first we're going to find our emitter and the first thing I would like to change is that the fluid drop off should be set back to zero. I do not want that the fluid should get uh, when it's going to release out from the emitter to get drop off or get slowdowns. So I don't, don't want to use the fluid drop off. The next important thing is that, guys, the density method. I'm going to utilize only the density, no heat, no fuel. That's quite obvious. So just go for no emission just go for no emission all right and under the density method obviously we're going to use the add okay but the case is that till what frame will continue to lead the density the reason i mean it's it's quite going to be obvious that the fluid cannot come from the ammeter for all the frames we need to think the best frame the best time to settle the puff of the dust so what i have concluded is that again if you're gonna disable this one for a while okay and coming back again for the fluid emitter let's just do one thing guys starting with the frame 33 i'm gonna give a key 1.5 and let's just do one thing for only 40 frames let's say for for seven frames only seven to eight frames only let's just put that thing to zero so that's really going to be good thing for us and again now coming back to the emission speed attributes what i've came to know is that since the puff should really going to be should really going to leave an impact so that is just not taking place like the way you saw previously. So what I did is that under the speed method, let's say we add the velocity. How? Let's say we're going to increase the normal speed to approximately 35. So by doing this, it's quite apparent that the this is going to be a polygon model. Okay. So the normals of the polygon model will going to push the fluids a little bit more outside its surface so this setting is really very important okay now again i gonna play the timeline once again and let's just notice what exactly are the changes we are getting so let me just switch off the disable mode okay and just play the timeline once again and now you can see that clearly the puff of the smoke sorry the puff of the dust is now coming out from all of the sack and is really gonna uh, 
I guess it's taking a good part inside the simulations. So that's really going to be a very important part in the discussion of our fluids. Okay, but you can see that following these steps also, I'm not really very satis uh, satisfied with the motion of the fluids. So what you're going to do is that I also can see that uh, somewhere on here, the fluid is fluid has got itself stuck because you know the way the bag has to deliver its impact there is something which is really missing no doubt we cannot still here analyze what exactly is going on because we still haven't tweaked out the graph of opacity and we haven't used the shader attributes to to visually improve our fluids but again like as i was talking about the motions the motion is still not like really very satisfactory. So what I'm going to do in that case, obviously I'm going to utilize some external fields, which is I, I can say the volume axis field to improvise the motion of our fluids. But that we're going to do uh, in the later section of this uh, of this lesson. Okay. So first of all, let me just do one thing. Very quickly, I would like to come to the shading section just to improvise, first of all, the look and feel of our fluids. The transparency is really going to be very high in this case. So the idle value should be 0.8 because the, the dust should not be very heavy because this just uh, no doubt a heavy bag is getting dropped on the floor, but the amount of the dust cannot be a huge. So I guess 0.8 is going to be a good start. The drop off shape should be set that to the off since I do not want, and you can see over here also, I don't want my fluid to be get uh, to be get dissolved inside the container from the negative y boundary axis. And again, the color will really going to be very important. So let's just do one thing. We're going to give a color of the dusty, and I recommend you guys just play around with one color. So do not uh, you know um, give more different colors because it may gonna affect the uh, the final look and feel. The incandescence is completely gonna be uh, will not gonna contribute to anything. Now opacity is really gonna be very very effective. So let me just gonna tweak the graph. It's really gonna be simple since we want a uh, a heavier a heavier graph. Just why? Because we want the fluid should really going to be a little bit dense, but not in terms of its opacity. It should be a soft and it should leave the impact of the dust. So this graph will going to support the look and feel of the dust. And you can also play around with the value of the input bias. I believe so 0.125 or let's say 0.15 will going to really help you. And what it's going to do, it's going to leave the corner of the fluid with a soft fall off that will that is actually present inside the dust okay so but again there's a problem you can see guys i just cannot you know um, clearly recognize what exactly is going on since it's very going to be very very flat output for me no doubt i do have a dedicated lesson for the lighting but just uh, for the sake of the demonstration let me just switch on the self shadow and see what exactly is just going on. So the shadow opacity also needs to be very carefully tweaked because we just cannot use a high opacity value. So 0.65 should going to be a good start. And let's say we also going to have some ambience, the impact of the external uh, environment in uh, in our fluids. So again, I'm going to use with the same color the uh, the one which I'm using for the diffuse pass so 0.25 should gonna be a good start let's say 0.35 okay and leaving all the attributes untouched because I do have a separate lesson for this so what next I'm gonna do is that let me just play that thing once again by studying the motion of the fluid once again and the point to be noted here is that we are using a very small base resolution just to to make our timeline a little bit fast and to uh, to understand where exactly the motion of the fluid is going okay so i guess that's all about this lesson
we're going to move to the next lesson where we're going to introduce our uh, external fields, the volume axis fields to improvise the motion of our fluids. Okay.